Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Thomas Isaac, the Finance Minister of Kerala. And we are going to discuss the recent issue with the Finance Commission regarding how much should be allocated to states based on the population. 2011 figures is what they are suggesting it be done, not 1971 as it has been for the last 50 years. What is the reason for wanting to change the 1971 figure? Well, there is a growing perception in many quarters that um, something as a, a position which is the three decades old cannot be the basis of calculation today. But people forget that when the population policy was announced in 1977, all states were assured you won't be discriminated because you have successfully implemented the population policy. And it was then formally announced that 1971 census figures would be used for all industry state distribution in the finance commission, say in the representation to the parliament and so on. Now that is being changed. Now what has happened is between 1971 and 2011, say population of Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra and so on increased only by 50 percent. But Rajasthan, UP, Madhya Pradesh and so on increased by 150 percent. 150 percent. 150 percent. <laughs> so, <laughs> the whole <laughs> The, the relative size of populations have undergone such a drastic change. If you are going to use the 2011 figures as weightage, say a state like Andhra is estimated to lose something like 40,000 crores going by the formula of the last finance commission. Kerala by 20, 22,000 crores. Now these are numbers that we can't afford to bear. Hmm? It will totally unsettle our finances. So slowly this realization has been spreading, disquiet has been spreading. Um, now at the same time, I want to be very open that uh, back owner should be a criterion for industry distribution of resources. The poorer states, more backward states, should get more support, financial support. There's no doubt regarding that. But at the same time, um, this has a regional dimension also. <laughs> All southern states' population growth has been much slow, uh, slower, and therefore, it's the southern states that generally stands to lose. Did West Bengal? Like West Bengal population decline. Punjab, yes. So there are other states also, but um, there is this phenomenon <laughs> that southern states are losing their share. But the whole criti criticism regarding the Finance Commission should not be reduced to this population weightage. There are more fundamental issues. Such as? This is a big assault on federalism itself and also I would say on democracy because now in finance commission all the stakeholders of equal status should be given equal consideration center and state but there is greater consideration for the center. Central government is using the Finance Commission as an instrument to impose the vision of development on the states. Let me put it this way. Kerala, from beginning of our, from the beginning of our state formation, we have chosen a different development trajectory. We have invested in education, healthcare, other social infrastructure, so that now the quality of life of ordinary citizens in Kerala is much higher than the rest of India. You have invested in the people, yeah, not yeah. just expanding capital space. That's right. 
and therefore instead of doing that suppose I, we had built a few dams <laughs> then there is no recurring expenditure dam is built expenditure is made finished but if you are building instead of that a hundred colleges then you have recurring expenditure of the salaries of uh, the teachers so the development path we have chosen um, has um, results in much higher recurring revenue expenditure while other states uh, particularly in the north india and so on they never invested in social infrastructure their recurring expenditure on social infrastructure is very small and therefore it will be very difficult almost impossible kerala to match balance the revenue receipts and revenue expenditure we will have a high dose of uh, revenue expenditure uh, on the other hand for other states it will be much simpler tasks now suppose somebody mechanically tells no 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 you have to balance your revenue expenditure and revenue receipt you cannot have a revenue deficit if you have a revenue deficit we won't give you resources uh, then you are infringing upon my state's autonomy but this revenue in expenditure and income that you receipts that you're talking about does not include what goes to the central coffer which also states have a share so it's only about that the that's right see all states have Uh, their revenue expenditure now the principle in economics is that expenditure is done best by the tier of government which is nearest to people hmm? on the hand collection of tax is best done by the tier of government which is farthest from the people <laughs> they are insulated from popular anger and so on so indian constitution has concentrated all revenue raising powers at the center while all social expenditures are with the state governments therefore there is a mismatch between the revenue and uh, the expenditure therefore constitution has instituted this uh, finance commission up to be appointed every 5 year to determine what proportion of the central revenues has go to states a b how it should be distributed between the states so essentially the central kitty also has a state share that is the basic that, understanding a, of the concept that, that is uh, elementary federalism you see is a constitutional right of the states and constitution does not and we said center using this as an instrument to impose its vision of development so they are saying now your resource transfer will be also influenced determined by you following certain conditions that you reaching certain fiscal targets now this time they have gone beyond the normal uh, references to say uh, one you have to incentivize finance commission certain um, programs like for some ease of doing business <laughs> we will measure ease of doing business and money has to be given for that uh, the e- efficiency of implementation of centers or flagship programs that have to be incentivized no these are not respect <laughs> no constitution of india doesn't uh, look at things in this manner you see they are trying to introduce programs into the domain which are constitutionally state and then using the instrument of finance commission to impose it on the state so two problems one is that you violate what was a constitutional guarantee given to the population policy that the states would not be affected by it and the second is you disturb the constitutional provision by what would be the allocation of the fiscal allocations as well as the responsibility of the state to spend the money the way they want yes that's right for example there is a terms of reference which says uh, what conditions can be imposed upon centers permission allowing the states to borrow now there are no conditions on borrowing you see except that you cannot borrow more than this now they are thinking of linking it to conditions they may say if you are going to borrow this much money directly then you cannot give guarantee for public sector to borrow 
I mean, the, all sorts of conditions can come in, you see. Uh, these are not done like that. For example, they have said, uh, you should consider the demand arising from, say, implementation of uh, India 2020. Uh, nobody knows what this stuff is, India 2020. Uh, it is uh, India free of dirt, okay, sanitation, uh, India free of poverty, uh, the, kind of, the kind of vision. Now, the central government wants to have money for that. Actually, these are constitutionally the domain of the states. They are already thinking of plan, drawing up some centrally sponsored program and want the finance commission to ensure that center would have money for this. You see. At the expense of the state's yeah. allocations. Well, that is an allocation. And for example, there's attempts of reference saying how to discourage populism, populist measures. Who is this finance commission uh, to uh, determine what is populist and what is not. Uh, it's a political domain, you see. There is no objective yardstick. If I don't it. like something, it's populism. If I like it, it is not populism. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, giving um, loan waiver to farmers can be considered populism. Giving school noon feeding can be considered populism. So, these are not in the domain of uh, proper domain uh, uh, finance commissions. So I would say this would be undemocratic, not just federalism. Uh, asking the finance commission to determine the, um, how to control populist measures is uh, totally unwarranted. So finance commission was supposed to do a technical exercise based on essential principles which have been laid down in the constitution, how the allocation should take place in that in, in this case, they are also bringing in a whole bunch of things the center would like to do. That's precisely what I'm saying. Federal structure envisages states have a certain fiscal space in which they must have the maximum autonomy. Now, to undertake activities in that domain, it requires resource transfer from the center. Now, this resource transfer is going to be with conditions which would determine what I should do in my domain. You see, that is unacceptable. Now, you know, I think there are two sets of issues here. Is it a part of BJP's, shall we say, vision that the nation state should be, quote unquote, far more central? They were never happy with the federal state identities of each state being there and so on. And, or is it a short term measure? that how using the center we can consolidate our political power in various states. You are absolutely right. BJP has coined this strange term, cooperative federalism. <laughs> As if federalism means states cooperate. <laughs> yeah. That's why we are nation so state. They, 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 the basic starting point, the premise is that states don't cooperate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there is a lot of conflict going on and therefore you need to emphasize a cooperative federalism which is far from the truth what the trend in India ever since the constitution was adopted has been trend towards greater and greater centralization um, many powers which were in the state list have moved to concurrent list and some of the to central list uh, the fiscal uh, dependence of states have only increased. The fiscal um, uh, powers have been curtailed through tax regimes like GST uh, and so on. So it's a trend has states, central government started drawing up centrally sponsored programs. Constitution, you won't find a word like that. Uh, Constitution says you do what is in your domain, then give the rest of the money to states, now centrally sponsored program. And here, definitely, it's a move to a greater centralization in the federal system. It is an attempt to scuttle the fiscal space of the state governments. See, for example, uh, the strange thing, they have said, your revenue deficit has to be zero. 
Well, I say it is very difficult for me, but I will try, I will bring down the revenue deficit zero. But if your revenue deficit is zero, then what do you borrow for? Only for capital expenditure. Then why should you say put a ceiling on capital expenditure? If our state we have been focusing upon social spending, now there is urgent need to have capital investment. Therefore, I want to borrow more, not for revenue expenditure, for cap capital expenditure. Why should I be stopped? So, I have been a big, I have been very crit criticizing this FRBM Act, which anyway has not been uh, observed by even by Sender also in India. But now they have set up a review committee of FRBM Act. That's the fiscal ah, responsibility. Two, ah, yeah. Fiscal responsibility, budget management act. 2017, the report has been submitted. Jaitley has said he is accepting the recommendation in the budget speech. Now those fellows say, well, that debt GDP ratio has to be reduced to 40% for center and 20% for state. If you want to reduce it to 40 plus 20, then the fiscal deficit to the center will have to be reduced to 2.5 from 3 and state government to 1.7. It's atrocious here. I mean, I don't know, it means simply disempowering the entire state governments. They will have uh, no money to function. So it's essentially an attempt to, I mean, I think a major attempt to ensure rule by, uh, governance by rule rather than by popular mandate. So essentially create dependence of the states on the center to the extent they don't have political space. That right, is, right. The fiscal space is be constrained in order to control the so political that space. So central government will the states are increasingly going to be agents of central government in, in implementing programs. It becomes an agency function. Now this was the function of the local government before 73rd, 74th constitutional amendment. So everybody speaks about decentralization, forgetting that decentralization also means transferring power from the center to state, from state to local government. But now with respect to state government, uh, what is happening is that they are being reduced to certain agency functions. See, uh, now with GST, there is absolutely no uh, financial powers. I mean, there is nothing. See, my budget speech now has no <laughs> section called uh, the taxes, that increasing or decreasing, nothing. I have to collect, get, accept our tax I would get from GST. The state governments are virtually reduced to the status of uh, glorified municipalities. <laughs> That's what <laughs> state governments are, um, because they have no taxation powers virtually. Um, see, so Isaac, you, what is the way forward? How do you fight? See, one GST can be reformed. There is uh, this um, ESO be doing business people who are saying simple tax, one rate. No, I don't believe in that. I think there must be a range within which state can choose and fix that tax, particularly when it comes to SGST. It does not affect anybody else. SGST means really? um, that component of the uh, GST which goes to the state. A part of the GST, half of it goes to center, half of it goes to state. My argument has been, well, the, that component which goes to the state, let it be in range so that every state can increase or decrease. Second, why 50-50? Let's make 60% of the revenue goes to the state, 40% goes to uh, center. See? Uh, so within an administration, greater power to the state government, and so on. See, the, the reform of GST is important. Uh, uh, so that uh, at some level, the state uh, rights are protected. That's one. Two, remove these conditionalities from transfer of central funds. 
if you want the certain norms to be evolved, let us sit down together as states and center in the National Development Council and discuss it. Uh, this is not something to be determined by uh, um, a bureaucrat or a scholar. A technical a body. No, these are things, matters that should be discussed. They can determine the division that the, poli that the constitution gives them the right. But the policy of development, that is not to be determined by the commission. National Development Council, uh, that should be the right forum. Call, convene it. Let us discuss. And let there be a consensus on that. So I would say the 15th Finance Commission, okay, the terms of reference is given, but they have a high degree of freedom to choose. They should desist the temptation of determining agenda of development of states. They should not put further conditionalities. Then it is their discretion how much to give, etc. But this they should not do. To convene NDC, let's discuss about these terms of reference, how it should be modified, or how it should be, what should be the policy. Now there can be consensus on many things and we accept it rather than it being imposed from outside agency. And three, now GST is in such a trouble. Well, let's discuss what modification should be done. Thank you very much, Isaac, for being with us. We will come back to you with further developments as it goes along. Yes, I think we are entering an important area of center-state relations, federalism in the country and we need as NewsClick to also discuss it at different times. That's all the time we have for NewsClick today. Please keep watching NewsClick.